welcome to the channel. My name is Tom Butwin, and today we are going to dig into the new UAFX Ruby pedal from Universal Audio. Now, this pedal is in a line of three pedals that just came out, and that's the Dream 65, the Woodrow 55, and of course, the Ruby that we have right here. And these all aim to emulate some of the most popular and iconic guitar amplifiers out there. This one is your Vox AC30. So think Beatles, Queen, I mean, you name it, people have played through this amplifier. It has its place in rock and roll history for sure. So let's start to dig in. When you look across the UAFX line, there are some similarities. A lot of these pedals have boosts. A lot of them have the output control, which gives you control that normally you would not have on an amplifier. So for example, how hot you want that signal going to your mixing console or your interface. So other than that though, these pedals stay very true to form with what the amp they're trying to emulate came with. So if it didn't have a spring reverb and this one doesn't, you're not getting it on this pedal. If it didn't have vibrato at all, you might not get it as in the case of the Woodrow. But in this, you do have vibrato, but it only works on certain channels just like the real AC30. And that is where you get a million different combinations, but you also might run into some stuff where you're twisting knobs on this pedal and nothing's happening, or even in some cases, the opposite of what you think was going to happen starts to happen. So let's talk about where we're gonna start. I'm gonna start on the normal channel. I've got it on the silver speaker option, and we are gonna go from there. So one thing, if you can see it on the camera here, when I spin this knob, this LED is going crazy and just blinking. And that's something you should note. When that happens, it means what you're doing is having no effect on the sound whatsoever. So this is one of those situations where, oddly enough, on the normal channel, on this AC30, when you start twisting the treble and bass knobs, nothing happens. They have no effect on the sound. Totally disabled, because on that channel, it didn't work that way on the real amplifier. So that's where we start. You just have your sound. Now I'm getting a little bit of saturation and overdrive because I have the volume up. And as with all these pedals from Universal Audio, this is where you can drive the amplifier and go from a relatively clean sound to a much more saturated and overdriven sound. You're starting to actually push that amplifier into breakup. So um, now you might be saying, well, how am I supposed to control EQ on this normal channel if I don't have abilities to do that with the treble and bass knob? Well, on the AC30, you have something that is kind of unique and interesting, and that is this cut knob. So right now it is totally off, and here's what it sounds like. <laughs> It's actually a very balanced, usable sound. It's warm, it's nice. You almost don't even need to start EQing things. But if you say, you know what, I would love to roll off some of those higher frequencies. Now, if I set that cut at noon, you can hear we're starting to roll off some of the top end. Now, if I go full out on the cut, yeah, you can see, I mean, it is, I wouldn't even say it's muddy, it's just dark, it's muffled. Uh, if that's what you want, it's gonna give you a really cool sound. If I get a little bit more gain by increasing that volume with the cut still all the way up. It's definitely a cool sound for sure. Okay, so if I switch over to the Brilliant channel, which is actually the top position of this toggle switch, we start to open up more options and more knobs that are actually doing something on the pedal. So we already talked about the cut. I'm gonna leave that totally off for right now. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the treble and bass knobs. Now, you are probably thinking, I know how a treble and bass knob works. Well, these knobs work totally different than that. In fact, they work kind of in complete reverse of what you would think. So here's the sound on the Brilliant channel, no cut, and treble and bass are turned all the way off to the left. It is a biting sound. I mean, I'm on the neck pickup on the Silver Sky, and it is cranking. I mean, it's, it's ripping. Now, if I start to do what 
I would normally do in this situation is I want to roll off the treble. Well, the treble's rolled all the way off, right? Not so fast. Actually, what you have to do is you go to the opposite. So when I first sat down with this pedal, I said, oh, wow, that's way too much treble. What do I do? Well, the last thing I'm going to do is turn up the treble knob. But guess what? When you do that... Now we're starting to warm up. We're going the opposite than what you would think. So we've got the treble all the way back off again. So we're back really, really bright. And if I crank the bass, it's actually doing the opposite. So you see, so when I roll the bass all the way off to the left, it's got a little bit more low end. But if I crank it all the way up, where you would normally think, hey, I'm going to get more of a low end, I have even less. So you know, if you start somewhere around noon on both of them, and on the Brilliant channel, you say, well, that's too bright. Now, the cool thing is, is remember the cut knob. We have a lot of high end on this Brilliant channel. If I start to bring that cut in, though, suddenly it starts to tame that a little bit. And then maybe I want to bring it back in. So, I mean, this <laughs> this pedal, I'm telling you, get the manual out, do your research on an AC30. If you already own an AC30, this is not all going to be a surprise to you. But if you're like me, I'm a Fender guy, I don't know how these things work. This was all very foreign to me, so it took a little bit of reading through the manual to even make this video, and I'm not going to by any means claim that I am an expert on this. I'm definitely not. I'm sure I'll say something wrong, so please correct me in the comments. That is the brilliant channel. Now, the other interesting thing is that you do have a boost, and that boost is functional in all three of the different positions. Now, if we stick with the Brilliant channel, there's that, and I start to bring that boost in. There's boost all the way up. And it's off. It's subtle, it's very subtle. So that's the brilliant boost. But if we go back to the normal channel, it's a different kind of boost. Oh, we have to reset everything. Because remember, the normal channel, you don't have any functionality on the treble and bass knobs. So there's cut all the way off. And if I start to boost on the normal... That's cool. I like that. Interesting. Very cool. I like that boost. Uh, this The boost on this pedal might be my favorite of all three of the UAFX Ampsim boosts because each pedal has a boost and they all react kind of differently. But again, if you want to use this boost, you can actually program in a preset. So you find a level you like, you save that preset and boom, now you can turn your preset button into a boost. If you want to get up over a band, play a solo or have a little bit of a different character to your tone at the press of a foot switch. So that leaves us with one more channel to explore, and that is the vibrato channel. And as you might have guessed, this option is not available on any of the other channels. It's only available on the vibrato channel. Very cool. There is a boost function on the vibrato channel as well. And that's really a non-coloring, more clean boost on the vibrato channel. So there are two things we have not talked about on this pedal that are very similar to some of the other pedals from UAFX that do amp simulation. And that is the fact that you do hear some reverb right now, right? You... I hear it, I'm sure you do too. And I said earlier on that this amp didn't have spring reverb built in. Well, you're not hearing a spring reverb. What you're hearing is actually a room reverb. <laughs> and 
And same with the Woodrow 55. It's a really cool, very usable sound that actually makes it a much more realistic experience. Uh, but it's not really reverb as an effect. If you're looking for spring reverb or long trails of reverb, cathedral style reverb, hall reverbs, this is not your reverb. This is a mic in a room with an amplifier simulation. So it's, you know, they call it room. So it's not even really labeled as reverb, as which is probably correct. You know, the room sound is what you're dialing in because if you totally turn that off, now, I mean, it is... It is dry as a bone and, you know, it's that's just unrealistic because even the, the most acoustically treated room is going to have a little bit of reverberation and you're going to hear it depending on how far away that mic is from the grill of the amplifier. The last thing I want to talk about with respect to options that you can change on this pedal are the different speakers you can drop in at the flip of a switch. I have been playing and demoing everything through the first option, which is called Silver. Now, this is actually a 15 watt Celestian Bulldog speaker. And as the instructions say, it is a rare speaker. And we have a 2 by 12 cabinet that is being emulated here. But important to note, each one of these different settings not only changes the speaker, but it also changes the microphone. And this is a 421 style mic. So that is going to give you a very specific sound, a very specific combination of that and the speaker. But if we go down one setting to the blue. Now we have the original Celestian in there in the two by 12 configuration, and this is with a different microphone. This is with an SM57. So listen to the difference there. Big time difference between those two. And of course, now we have the third option that is labeled as green. Now this is a more modern Celestian speaker, again, two by 12, and this is a ribbon mic now. So you can see major difference. Big difference between all the different speaker and microphone combinations. Now, if you're saying, hey, three's not enough, as with all of these pedals, if you purchase it and register it with Universal Audio, they will give you three additional speaker and microphone emulations that will be then in your pedal if you download them through the USB port on the back. This is a complicated pedal. I'm not gonna lie to you. But the cool thing about that is, is that the combinations between all of the different channels, between the different speakers and microphones, between the different EQs that are active and sometimes not active and how they work opposite to what you would normally think. And also the very unique cut knob that rolls off your high end. I mean, you have almost an infinite number of combinations that you can employ with this pedal and get all kinds of interesting sounds. Now, with the exception of the very bright, brilliant channel, which you can tame as we demonstrated, I think all these tones are very usable. If you just spend about 15, 20 minutes reading the manual and experimenting, you're gonna find what you really want out of this. And that is really even more geared towards people who are not AC30 people like me. Now, again, if you are an AC30 person you're not going to be as lost with this as I was. I was easily able to get through it though and figure out all of the different options. And if I spent time with it and became more intimately familiar with it, I'm sure I would learn even more. Um, this isn't really the style of amplifier that I like to play through. It's an awesome amp. It, it really, really is cool. I mean, look up who's played through it. You are going to be, you know, if you don't already know, it's it's all over all your favorite records. Queen, The Beatles, as I mentioned. I mean, it's just, it, it, it was a really, really, really cool amp in rock guitar history. So I hope that's helpful. If you have any other questions about this pedal, please leave them in the comments. If I got something wrong, also leave it in the comments and let me know because again, I am not an AC30 expert by any means. All I know is this pedal has a lot of options and a lot of different things you can do with it and I've only scratched the surface here in this video. If you enjoyed this, please stick around on my channel, comment, like, subscribe if you really like what I'm doing. And if you're not done on YouTube, and you wanna continue scrolling through your phone or maybe you're watching on your smart TV or computer, I would love it if you stuck around on my channel and went and checked out these videos right over here.